Well, for more on this story, we can cross to James Kirkham, Chief Scientific Advisor at the International Cryosphere Climate Initiative. Thank you for speaking with us here on France 24. What, do you, what to expect from this uh, first summit of its kind? Well, today and tomorrow we're hearing from scientists about their priorities to address the uncertainties about what's going to happen to the cryosphere. So how much ice we're going to lose and how fast. And this will then inform policymakers on the Friday about what we need to do to respond to the changes that are coming because of global warming. Now, I never thought we'd be in a position where we could link uh, what you're working on to uh, the Middle East and the war in Ukraine. But fact is, we've seen recently that at the UN, because you need the whole planet to agree uh, on, on what happens at the polls, uh, there has been no agreement uh, because the Russians, the Chinese uh, have been uh, balking at it. So how do you advance if you don't have the uh, five permanent members of the Security Council singing from the same hymn sheet? You're right. So these, they need to be, there needs to be consensus over how we address these problems because they are global issues and they touch every single country in the world, even nations that don't have any ice in them. Um, in fact, some of the smallest countries, such as small island states, which have no ice at all, are most affected by the losses in the polar regions. The world has to come together to address this crisis, and we need to put aside our differences between countries and really bring forward radical action for the future of the whole planet and put this aside for now because this is really going to define the future of our children and the children's children in future generations. Concretely, radical action, what's the, what's the low-hanging fruit? What's the first thing you would like to see? Well, immediately we need to have radical reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. So the 1.5 degree target, which we know for the cryosphere has to be a red line because of changes which will be initiated above that value, is still achievable. It's still scientifically achievable. And going past that 1.5 degree limit is a political choice, not a scientific choice. And so we need to see groundbreaking reductions in greenhouse gas emissions from the major emitters. We also need to see measures to adapt to the changes that are now locked in, because many of the changes from the cryosphere are already locked in by decades of emissions before now. And we also need to be working on a mechanism to compensate countries that will experience loss and damage because of effects like sea level rise, which are now locked in from cryosphere loss that we can't avoid by future emissions reductions. However, by acting now, we can still limit the worst of the damage. Very briefly, James Kirkham, just because we've been talking a lot about Greenland, uh, we have a report on our website about it. How much has it changed just in the past 10 years and how much will it change just in the next 10 years? So Greenland is changing extremely rapidly. In fact, it's really surprising many of the researchers how quickly it's changing there. It's currently tracking at the same level as the upper worst case predictions of the IPCC, and it's set to contribute substantially to sea level rise in the future. So currently, the Greenland and Antarctic ice sheets contribute about a third to global sea level rise. The other two thirds are from mountain glacier loss and the thermal expansion of the ocean. We're looking by the end of this century at sea level rise from these three sources between about half a meter to a meter, depending on our actions today. And so these ice sheets are only just waking up to the changes, though. And we're really concerned that if we continue to push the planet to ever warmer levels, we'll cross into thresholds and tipping points, which will then make the loss of ice from these ice sheets inevitable, which will play out for centuries to come. A startling scenario. James Kirk, and many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Stay with us. More to come. More news plus today's business and sports. You're watching France 24.